Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Scottish Property Podcast. My name is Stephen Clark and I'm joined as always by my co-host Nick Ponte. How are you, Nick? Not bad, mate. A wee bit bleary-eyed this morning after a late night last night, our networking events. It yeah, was good, though. It was really, really good. Your, your venue looked phenomenal. The, 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 yeah, the, the, your, your place, the atmosphere in Glasgow is, always looks good. Um, we had Charlotte Edwards come up from um, episode 95, I think it was, Accidental Landlord on Instagram. She came up to the Aberdeen events. So that was really good. But yeah, a long, long day and recording a podcast this morning. Yeah. And today we've got a really, really lovely, lighthearted guest. And today we've got Alex Lawson um, from Aberdeen, who's got an Instagram account called Casa Lawson. Um, and I followed Alex for probably about a year and a half. And she does really, really cool stuff on Instagram. Like she's always doing quite creative DIY projects. And I noticed, like, you know, at a down, downtime period between Christmas and New Year where you're kind of watching shit on the telly, which I never, ever do. And there goes BBC Home of the Year, which I have watched before in the past, obviously, being into property and, and interior designs and, and development, stuff like that. And it was, a, it, was a, it was an episode or a special episode for Scotland's Christmas Home of the Year. And I noticed she'd post on Instagram saying that she's on the TV since Scottish Christmas Home of the Year. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Someone, you know, I know or engage with, I was like, oh, that's quite cool. I'll watch this. And, uh, you know, I did fall asleep and never actually watched the ending of it, which I met a term before the podcast started. This is but, not a, that's not a good advert for the podcast, mate. You fell asleep. She, <laughs> she's, uh, she, our page is phenomenal. Like she, she does these DIY projects. And, and, I, and I did make a joke saying that she'd be the perfect one to get on um, for Nick to showcase how you can do stuff on the cheap. But honestly, our stuff looks phenomenal. She does it all herself. She documents her Instagram page. It's so cost-effective. And I thought, do you know what? She's a great guest to have one because... Material costs are going through the roof. Trades are in such demand that they're going through the roof. And if we're trying to keep any kind of renovation project or, or make your flip project or your rent or your, your buy to let stand out in the market, these are the type of things I think you've got to do. You've got to get really creative for this budget and, and probably get inspiration like from the likes of Alex. And I think if you know if DIY is your thing, I actually do enjoy a bit of DIY when I get my head into it. Um, so I really enjoyed this interview from uh, Alex, but I think that. We always tell people your time's better spent elsewhere, not doing the actual grafting and not doing the actual, you know, work on site and get the professionals in because they can do it much faster. Maybe not cheaper, obviously, but, you know, but I think a lot of people actually enjoy the final part. You know, a lot of people that I speak to, they're like, Nick, that's, that's a bit of the actual property that I enjoy most. Actually putting all the finishing touches, the, um, the, the mirrors and the cushions and all the rest of it, looking at making it, dressing it, looking at making it look nice for sale, etc., like that. So I think a lot of people will like this yeah. interview. And, 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 and Alex loves it. You can tell she's passionate about it. She loves it. She loves what she's doing. She loves the fact she's building this brand, this Instagram page where she's sharing good value and she's really looking to give back and, and, and show people you don't have to have spend thousands of pounds to make your home look good. Yeah, it was good fun. So we'll just cut to the interview with Alex Lawson. Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast, Alex Lawson. Thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, hello. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, <laughs> give us a little chat. Up. Give us a little background on uh, on on what it is you do, um, and and what it is you do on social media that that why we've wanted to get you on to share your incredible value. Yeah, so um, back in two thousand nineteen, when I first bought my house, I started kind of sharing a little bit about. What I was doing to decorate my house which really kind of took off once we uh, went into lockdown in 2020 and people were messaging me more and more about how had I done things how had I learned how to do them and so I started to share tutorials on DIY and some ideas for people and it's just really taken off on my Instagram page which is now um, a really enjoyable kind of part-time job. And, and, and how did you get started in DIY what, what got you what got you going what made you want to do it? Yeah, so growing up, I was always my dad's sidekick, I guess, and projects that he was doing and learning about uh, the next job that was on him and his friends list that they thought they would tackle. And I always really enjoyed kind of seeing what you could do. And he always used to say, you know, I'm not going to pay somebody to do something that I could do myself. So when I moved into my house, I knew that I would be able to tackle a good bit of it myself, but I'd never put up a shelf or a picture or anything. And I laugh now because I paid somebody to come and put up shelves in my kitchen when I first moved in. And I kick myself now because I think, God, that's 250 quid I could have had in my pocket. Um, but just from watching other people on Instagram and watching YouTube videos, I've been able to learn bit by bit what to do. Started with smaller projects. The first thing I did was, you know, paint on walls and like I say trying to put up pictures and things and with each project I usually buy a new tool or something else that I can add to the toolkit uh, and learn as you go but yeah it's a it's a steep learning curve I've seen me in the garage with the uh, 
using a mop bucket as a template for cutting, which is definitely not safe. So we've moved on from the days of that. <laughs> People always ask me, like, especially the workshops, like, oh, how do you get your inspiration from, for your for your renovations, for your buy and just be a bit more creative. And I always say, like, accounts like yours, like, kick, follow them on social media, look at what they do. But the main reason why I brought you in here, because you do phenomenal stuff on a budget, and I know how much a tight ass Nick is. So I know he's going to have loads and loads of questions for you because I, some of the stuff you do is phenomenal. Like, I, just... I I remember we did a we did a podcast episode. We we're talking about kitchens or something like that, and I says I, I've seen myself get like you know get on Gumtree and all that and get secondhand kitchens, and I've sold a few secondhand kitchens as well actually to other landlords. Uh, so it looks like you're kind of doing a bit of that as well, Alex. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But even that with that comes at stories. I'd never forget the first kind of bit of furniture that I went to buy off of Facebook Marketplace. I hadn't quite got the gist of like how spot on you have to be with the measurements for these things. And I remember going to this really shady estate to pick up this uh, chest of drawers that it was. And as we went in, it was like the house was just really not very nice. It really smelled. And we got there and got these chest of drawers and they in the space were like tiny for the space that we're meant to be in and they just absolutely smelled rotten you did not want them in your house so I ended up having to bleach them clean them as best I could and then I managed to sell them on for 10 pounds more than what I paid for them so it was fine I hadn't even done anything to them <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, right up your street Nick it's amazing. I mean, it is like it's amazing the stuff that people throw out right or like just give away for free that you're like wow you know I mean so much, so much stuff on that marketplace. How did you come up with your creativity, like to get inspired? Because I mean, I saw one that you done another week there, where, where you got the slabs that I would have launched, I would have like lifted up, threw out. You painted them grey. You get a template. You paint the template onto them, and honestly, Nick, you should see this. It looks phenomenal. Like it's like wow. And it was a, was a was a ridiculous budget, wasn't it? It was like only a couple hundred quid after that. Yeah. So I knew when I I knew that gardens were expensive, and this was before like the prices have gone crazy recently with like cost of supplies but this was a wee bit before that and I knew that if I wanted the garden that I'd seen I was never going to be able to afford for somebody to do it all so I had to find ways to save on some things and then get groundsmen to do the bits that I knew I wouldn't be able to do um, and I'd followed this account Dizzy Duck Designs for a while and saw that they were sharing loads of content of that they created these really cool stencils that you could use but the question is always you know Will it last over winter? Will it start peeling? And I mean, it, like, it took me hours of painting that stent. So now it's really worth it. But at the time, I did quite a bit of research of like, am I going to have to redo this every year? And that page had put up, they kind of put it to the test. They power washed their own stencil after it had had all its stuff. And it really stood the test of time. So I thought I would just give it a go. And that's definitely been one of my most popular, I think, kind of hacks on ways you can upgrade your patio without spending thousands of pounds. And how, how much was that upgrade? Because people can go and look in your, look in your account and have a look at it. Yeah, 200 quid, I think it cost me. I was right. about 50 or 60 quid for the stencil and then masonry paint and your rollers and things. If you didn't already have them, then a, a patio sealer. So yeah, about less than 200 pounds, I think it cost me. And somebody uncreative and dumb like me, I probably would end up just paying somebody a couple of grand to go and relay a nice patio to make it look nice. So yeah, phenomenal. Um, but, but what yeah, you... What you what what you said about obviously when you got into this during lockdown. So did you did you have like time like were you like furloughed? Did you have time where that you could concentrate on this stuff or how did you know how did all this come about? No, so I am famous for people saying to me like how do you how do you do everything that you do? Uh, I was still working full time during lockdown, but I'm somebody who does something every night of the week. So. For example, I've just finished a musical theatre show last week. So that was about 12 or 15 hours a week that I've now got back that I'll go back to doing interior stuff at night. So the biggest thing was things like I didn't have show rehearsals. So that was time that I got back. You weren't really yeah. able to go out with your mates unless you were going to be on Zoom, which got tired very quickly. Um, so all of a sudden had a bunch of extra time from not going out and about that I just started doing it on weekends and in evenings. But I really enjoy doing it. So it doesn't feel like a chore and until you get to some of those. It, it probably was perfect perfect timing as well because like I noticed that you know every like it was every other business was pretty much closed down but like being q and all that remained open so like there was nothing else for people really to do apart from everybody piled into being q and started like you know spending money in their houses and upgrading and doing bits of DIY jobs that have probably sat for years 
you know, that they'd been putting off and putting off. Eventually, those jobs were getting done. I mean, you look over the fence to your neighbours, they're all painting the, 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 the <laughs> garden fence and all that. They hadn't been touched for like 10 years and stuff. So it's probably just that timing that probably contributed to your, your explosion on uh, Instagram as well. So that was really cool. I remember as well when you're saying about being cube in one of the only places open. I'll never forget turning up and it was like a snake queue around the yeah. car park to be able were to you, get into. Were you in Aberdeen and um, being queue at um, Bridget? Yeah. Bridget on. Uh, yeah. Did you yeah, not even go for snake. a trade point card? <laughs> <laughs> well, what you what I eventually found out was if you did click and collect, you could skip the whole queue. And I mean, once you're in the shop to get your click and collect, you could go and get whatever other stuff you'd forgotten. So that was like the next thing on Instagram, you know. Yeah, Everybody, if you need to go to being q that's what to yeah, do. Yeah, like, so you should have followed my Instagram account back at the start of lockdown then because I remember posting on my story going, look, I was like looking at the spiral queue. It was huge going right around the car park. And I goes, if you've got a trade point card, you just go in this door here. And it was like completely empty. And I'm sure people just apply for trade point cards or, or trade point card offers. Um, what, what I think something great as well to get you on and, and talk about is we all doing flips, doing renovations, doing our own projects, like like the material costs are going nuts. So you're, you're kind of finding it more and more difficult to bring your project inside budget, but you kind of come up with these creative ways of doing it. So if you, what would be your biggest tips for most cost-effective ways to maybe like improve the main rooms, your, 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 your property, like a kitchen or a bathroom? Yeah, so I think one of the, one of the main things I've done has been wall panelling, which quite often people think that you need to use like pine wood or perhaps strip wood, which can be quite pricey. But whenever I do it, provided it's not um, like mouldings with a pattern on it, if it's just plain, you know, that grid style that's become quite popular or horizontal lines, you can use sheets of MDF. And if you use the sheets of MDF and get your local timber merchant to cut it into strips on their industrial machines it's way easier than you trying to cut it in strips at home and a lot more accurate it's a really cheap way to do it you know you might be like 20 30 quid for the board mdf depending on your thickness and then another 30 quid for your materials to get it on the wall and your level to get it straight and all of a sudden once you paint that it looks cracking it's a really easy way to to bring a bit of impact to a room through a kind of feature wall that isn't just a color yeah, yeah so stuff like bedrooms and that for back back wall panels and stuff like that's quite good yeah yeah and one of this... the one of the biggest cost savings for outside has been garden. So this kind of like horizontal slat fence has become a real trend over the last kind of two years. And the original ones that which do look brilliant, but they're so expensive is cedar. So a lot of people, you know, when they get quotes, they either want to buy it in pre-made panels, which is really pricey, or they want to buy it cedar. And I basically had seen that you could use roof battens um, as long as they were treated for outside and you could make the fence out of that. Nice. And and like in terms of do you just leave them natural then or do you have to put some sort of staining or some sort of paint them or something like that? Because the problem about painting a fence, isn't it? It's always like it looks great at the time and then a couple of years later you need to do it again. Nobody can be bothered painting the fence. So as a a way to I got quite so I got quite lucky, I think, because I got treated sawn roof buttons, which basically came like not yellow but like a kind of tinged color and it's just weathered over time so it was already treated and able to be used for outside i've sealed it now with a kind of clear protector outside but the colors just weathered over time which is suited because the rest of my garden that wood's weathered too and it now all kind of matches so you can do it with if you get lucky with the first color you've got you're fine I've noticed the, the wall panel, certainly the wall panel feature wall uh, definitely seems to be a thing up in Aberdeen. Like I noticed all you guys, Stephen and all that, all you guys are doing them, but it looks absolutely brilliant. I mean, they look minted and I like, um, there's usually a kind of dark blue, isn't it? That paint, I like the dark blue finish. That looks really nice. Um, yeah, it's such a, such, a way to, such a good way to do it, but it's funny because these things all go full circle. I keep saying, like, whoever buys my house in 15 years, I'm going to be their worst enemy when they're trying to get all this stuff off the wall. And it's like, who no nails the all the wall? I need to get this all replastered. But Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's the next big project in your, in your house then? <laughs> so that is my garage. So for anybody who does follow me on Instagram, the first thing that I did when we went into lockdown was tied to the garage and now two years on you literally cannot walk in the garage it has become the total dumping ground with going between projects unloading the car reloading the car with x y and z tools um but what i would really like to do is get that floored and turn half of it into like a workable utility and boot room um so that's the next project now so at the minute i'm kind of looking into what's best to use for the garage floor um and a lot of people i think will look to do the same so i'm trying to find something that will be easy for other people to replicate 
and you're um, so your your home has definitely got huge success over the last few months. And I remember you seen you posting on Instagram around Christmas time and trying to drunkenly on us on a evening between Christmas and New Year watch you on BBC's Christmas Home of the Year. Was it? Yep, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was really really fun show to be a part of. So tell us a lot about that. How did that come about? Yeah, so Scotland's Home of the Year, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, is basically a TV show where um, they go around and they look at different regions of Scotland. So each week it's a different part of Scotland. It could be like Orkney and Shetlands, it could be Aberdeen, it could be Dumfries and Galloway. And they pick a selection of houses, they go around and the judges score them and always one score is left anonymous. And each week there's a winner and then there's a final. Um, I've always watched it. It's one of my favourite programmes just because it's in Scotland and you get to be dead nosy inside other people's houses. Um, And then I started to get tagged probably around October time. People started sending me on Instagram and Facebook that they were doing a casting call for Christmas Homes of the Year. And for the first time, they were going to do a kind of one-off episode um, for Scotland's Christmas Home of the Year. And I am Christmas nuts. I am totally... You know, I don't go tacky, but I go big. I really, really love Christmas. It was one of my favourite times of the year growing up and I have so many decorations. So everybody kept saying to me, you should just enter, you should just enter. And I thought, I've got nothing to lose. There's no way my new build house will ever end up on it. Because a lot of the time it's like amazing self builds or really cool um, like conversions and things. Mm-hmm. Right, but it seems like we went for a... Yeah, really, really like, you know, your jaw drops. You just think, oh, that's forever home material. Um, but I got through and the first the first call was just uh, you had to send them pictures of your previous decorations and explain a bit around your theme behind Christmas and why do you love it so much. And then they come to see your house without any of the decorations up and you take them around and tell them what you do in each space. And I was the last person out of their kind of 10 houses that they'd shortlisted and they were trying to get it. Um, lose another five out of the mix before you went to filming and so I only had 24 hours to wait but I then found out on the Wednesday that I was into the filming and I had until Sunday to decorate the whole house for Christmas so this was in November and my mum was meant to be coming for a relaxing birthday weekend in Aberdeen come up we'll go out for the weekend we'll go for dinner that'll be great she arrived and it was like right let's get to work we've got the whole house to decorate for Christmas so by the 5th of November, the house was absolutely decked and then the filming crew came the next day and I just kept my decorations up. So my neighbours must have thought I was bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> at, least you, at, least you, at least you were one of those annoying people that put your decorations up a month before you should have for a, for a good reason. Yeah, absolutely. It was really funny when they came to the filming because one of my biggest things was that I do a really big archway at my front door. And when they came to the film, it was pitch black. So there was like all these cameramen stood with really big lights shining so they could get the shot. And all of my neighbours were kind of looking out of their window. And the producer was like, God, you've got real nosy neighbours. It's like, to be fair, nothing cool like this ever happens in our street. If this was somebody else, I'd be the exact same stood at the window seeing what was going on. That's really cool. You must be like the, the street celebrity now. <laughs> I don't know about that, but we're getting there. I have once had in being q somebody say to me, are you the girl from Castle Lawson? I was like, oh my God, this is hilarious. <laughs> Do you know what? I, my, I was with my daughter in, the, in a fish and chip shop in a rough area in Fife, like last Saturday. And the guy, the guy that was behind, the owner behind the fish and chip shop shouted, are you the property guy on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was like, is that, is that your friend, Dad? It's like, no. You've made it. You've, you've made it. When you get recognised in a chippy, that's when you've made it, mate. You're a big time celebrity. Absolutely. <laughs> I think what's funny is you start to see, like, some of my friends now get really tickled by the fact that they know that they've got friends who follow my account who don't know me. So now they know that they only know me as, like, the DIY girl or whatever. One of my friends, she quite recently was at work, and a colleague of hers has just moved into a new house and said to her, oh, I follow this account. She does loads of really good stuff. You should follow it. And my friend just burst out laughing and was like, oh, there's no way. That's like a girl who I went to uni with. I know exactly who that is. So it's quite funny when it's other people who don't know who you are. But your account has blown up since, and it's probably been the popular like, the TV show as well. Was that, it, was, it was about Christmas time that it was aired, wasn't it? Yeah, so going into the start of the year, um, I probably was around about the 15,000 mark or something. And, you know, you start off the year and you think, what do I want to achieve this year? What would I like to do? And kind of growing my interiors business and that whole home side of things was a big goal for the year. And I really wanted to try and get to like 25 at a push 50k. And then all of a sudden, 
a couple of my videos that I'd created and put out there just took off and my account has yeah gone wild over January and um, we've just gone past the 150k mark so yeah, it's wild. <laughs> you're not you're not keeping up with the numbers because I'm looking at your account now and it was 175 last time I looked at it 175. Oh well there you go. 175. We're on the way to 200. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it's really it's it's great and like. I look at the, the some of the projects there. Uh, lighting seems to feature quite a bit as well. I think lighting can make a huge difference to home. Do you know? What I mean, like any good tips on on light and what's in trends at the moment? Yeah, I think one of the big ones as well is um, whether you know it's a, a new build that you're going into. When I got my house, I couldn't pick stuff. You know, it was already done, so I couldn't have added spotlights. Um, which I think make a real difference in a house. And I have had spotlights put in throughout all of my hallway area. And I was able to have that retrospectively done for a lot cheaper than what I thought it was. Electrics isn't something I like to tackle too often. I just leave that to folk who have got the certificates. But um, spotlights is a big one that can really help you. And also in the kitchen, doing things like plinth lighting, having your under cabinet lighting, you can do that stuff retrospectively actually really quite cheap just by getting kind of strip sticky lights that you can then get wired in or even in some cases have plug in if you've got a suitable um, socket point. And on a project I'm doing at the moment, what we're doing there is putting the same kind of lights under wooden shelves in the living room. So that's going to be their kind of lighting because they've not got anywhere to put lamps that is, makes sense. So we're going to do some under shelf lighting in there too. So that's another really good one. A question for you, DIY expert, right? Something that I've always struggled with, and I think I'm get, I think I've probably found a solution to it now, right? But for years, my my wife would say to me, "Go and hang up that picture or that mirror or just something on the wall, right, which required a fixing basically into the plasterboard, right? And it would always last for a couple of weeks, and then it would always fall down. So, what are the best? Have you got any tips? Like, what's the best fixing you can get for? plasterboard or is there anything you can offer our listeners to just hang stuff up that's going to last yeah so there's a really good company called grip it which you can get them in b q but you also can order them on amazon in a handy pack and they come in varied kilogram holding sizes so for example my wine rack is on the wall with uh, these which i obviously needs to be trusty for all the bottles it's going to hold so uh, you can get them at varying kilogram points and they just go into the wall you make a a drill fitting big enough that you can fit it's like a disc and then you basically turn with a screwdriver the middle of the disc and they fan out into the wall um a little bit different from those other fixings that people might be familiar with that expand into the back of the plasterboard these instead instead almost expand into the the middle casing of your plasterboard so they're a really good one and so are screw in raw plugs so instead of having to drill into the wall plastic screw in raw plugs that basically make themselves tighter as you go the big trick with them though is not to over tighten them because as soon as you get past the the strongest point they start to loosen in the walls so that's when you've got to be patient great stuff so uh, grip what did you say what was the name of them grip grip it grip it grip it right grip it right yeah. i'm gonna get them right no bother <laughs> nick, nick, can, nick can now be the man around the house thanks to alex lawson <laughs> and, uh, and there'll, there'll be loads of listeners going oh my god now that's right I to, i'll need to do that job next week or something like that. but that's good that's good it's good tips so what's tell us like something more about the future than the plans what you have for your interior design company is it something you want to focus on to grow to go full time into that or something you can enjoy doing part-time so it definitely is going to stay as part-time for now what's really cool about the kind of new and up and coming what I would say you know content creator space it's still really new and it's an industry that is growing massively and in the US which we're a couple of years behind you know there's real monetization in that for people and I am lucky that I I do enjoy my day job Um, so I'm not looking for an escape right now but I do like the fact that this in a few years if I decide to have you know family further down the line I'm going to have options on flexible working and life on on my terms if I can monetize this in the right way but there's a lot more opportunities to work with brands now which is something that I've yeah dipping my toe into which is a whole a whole new space but a big thing of that is that a lot of companies um you know if they can tap into your not only your audience but they don't have to hire a photographer they don't have to hire a location they don't have to hire somebody to dress it that's all stuff they would typically pay for so they can then offer you a fee as well as product or whatever else so when it's stuff that you already use um it's a really good way to monetize part of your business the other thing that i really want to ramp up is tutorials for people so i get i've got basic stuff on my page but i would really like to have you know 
step-by-step -step blog posts that people can tap into and possibly maybe kind of workshop videos that you would um, have on your website that people can, you know, learn step-by-step -step what to do a bit better than it's sometimes a bit quick on Instagram for people, which, which I understand. And then who knows after that, at the moment, I've had a lot of inquiries for garden design, which is not something I will be adding to my portfolio in the near future. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what the future holds. There's a lot of stuff I now get offered to work on that would have been, you know, I never in a million years thought I'd have got to do. So yeah, excited to see what the now, it's, it's, it's all well and good, right? You showing these highlight reels, right? But there must be some DIY disasters as well behind the scenes. So what? what there absolutely go, is. What? One familiar to people is Sinkgate. That is uh, one that is definitely famous on my account. It just takes one look at my uh, bathroom highlight reel and you will see that I tried to remove one tile that was a splashback in my main bathroom and took the entirety of the plasterboard behind the tile with it, leaving right. a gaping hole in the wall. Right. And how did that, how did you manage to, did you manage to fix, did you manage to make it good again or did you have to get a professional yep. one? No, I managed to fix it. So the, the, the hole in the wall was the first challenge. That was a, a, a late night trip to B&Q. You, of course, only need a tiny bit of plasterboard, but you need to buy a full sheet. And then it was home, patch up the wall. So that was the first thing. The next thing was I'd never done any plumbing before, but I decided I was going to give the plumbing a go. And I'd done so much running up and down the stairs to switch the water on and, on and off that I was sure the water was off before I opened the pipe. <laughs> and of course was the water off no it wasn't and all of a sudden there was like mains pressure water coming out of the bathroom i was the only one home the stopcocks in the kitchen and it was like i had my hand over it's it like there's no other option here but to let this go and run as quick as i can down the stairs to get to this stopcock so and this is like you know i've decided i'm going to try and do this on a lunchtime working from home so it's really stressful because all of a sudden this 15 minute job is like water spraying all over the house and i'm meant to be going back to work so you can picture the scene i'm like running downstairs as quick as i can eventually get the water turned off and i think gosh i think i've gotten away with that it seems you know mopped up the water absolutely fine but an hour later i go downstairs and go into the garage and there's just water on the floor <sighs> in the garage and i'm like oh my god how where is this coming from then i look above me in my study and there's water tracking the plasterboard seam and then i started to panic because i couldn't figure out if it was like water that had just been residual from the previous escapades or whether i'd like hit into a pipe somewhere and there was now a leak that was causing this yeah. so i started drawing lines around it all in the house tracking the water where it was going and i just would sat, be sat on work calls looking at this water traveling but it eventually stopped, so it was just water that had come from when the, the mains was going and it eventually dried up. So that's probably the biggest disaster I've had. I think I'll leave the plumbing to the professionals in the future. Well, I know that is, I mean, while we're on that, Stephen, you get any to share? Because I've got a good one as well, just while we're on the subject of disasters. I've got, I've got similar ones, but I, I know the kind of thing that happens to me when I'm running in the stairs, I end up slipping and falling and it takes you an extra 30, 40 seconds to recover yourself, get yourself up, dust yourself off, and then go and switch the water off. But in the meantime, there's an extra 100 litres of water pumped out everywhere. I yeah. did one. This is one that uh, some people might have related to, but uh, the, uh, bleeding the radiator, right? So unscrewing the bleed valve, overdid it, it popped off, the pressure in the central heating system burst open the valve and inside the radiators and the heating system obviously it's gunky water isn't it it's black water and it just went what covered me in this black spray the valve popped off the thing's gushing out hitting the white wall i couldn't stop it i had one finger over the, the thing i was trying to find the valve and then i was like ah and then i had to just get it back on screw the nut in and then manage to stop it but what a, what a mess that was i and that's a simple job. Like, I mean, sometimes I say to my tenants, you need to just bleed the radiator. And then sometimes I think, oh, geez, well, that could end up a disaster. <laughs> you always get these wee, these things, they hit and, you know, putting nails through flipping gas pipes and stuff like you're thinking, God. But what, when I was actually listening to that story there, Alex, I was wondering, what gives you the confidence to tackle these jobs that, you know, most people won't tackle it? And, and you're not in a trade, are you? No, so it's not like definitely you're not. Any kind of training to experience it. So, what gives you the kind of confidence to go? Do you know, I'm going to tackle. I'm going to try plumbing. I'm going to try and fit this gas boiler. I think I was probably a bit optimistic about. Oh, what's the worst that could go wrong? Like the water started to get a bit worrying. That probably could have gone 
seriously wrong. These are the <laughs> kind of things I don't tell my mum till they're fixed. So don't usually appear on Instagram stories till after there's like, ta-da, it's all fine now. Because if I was to tell her in the middle of it, she would panic. I remember when I first said, you know, oh, I'm going to do this in the house or I'm going to do that in the house. She'd be like, are you sure? Maybe, you know, maybe we should get a company in to do that. No, no, it's fine. I can tackle it. I've definitely got it on site now. She's impressed with what I'm able to do. But I think I just think what's the worst that could go wrong. And ultimately, at the end of the day, most of these things, are not expensive to fix you know if I was to have a go at this wall panel and I got it really wrong worst case scenario is you have to take it off and start again you might have to do a bit of sanding on the wall or something or you know eventually get somebody else in to do it if you want to do it but it's worth having a go because you can save thousands of pounds like I have saved so much money just been able to do a lot of it myself and it's easier than you think you don't strike me as the type of person that would get the tradesman and if you made a mess at a couple of times like you get you strike me as a person that would actually go and keep doing the wall panel until you got it the way you wanted it and then go done yeah, I'm the person who, at like, you know, normal people on a Sunday night at like half 11 are on the sofa with a glass of wine and I am outside with like a spray paint can still making something or still trying to fix it. I've seen me when my, when the storm came before Christmas and my Christmas arch got like ransacked in the weather and I was outside with the head torch on because the daylight was gone and I was determined I was going to get it finished and fixed before the next day, so... Yeah, you're right, Stephen. <laughs> it's really cool because, like, uh, me and Stephen talk to a lot of investors and all that, and we say, look, your time is best spent, you know, it's finding deals and out buying the properties and all this stuff, you know, you should get professionals in and do it and all that stuff. But actually, this part of the process, you know, putting the cushions in and making the place look amazing and all the little bits and pieces and in the interior design, that's what, like, is the exciting part of property to a lot of people. So, you know, if that's your thing, then, you know, I think it's great. Obviously, get onto Alex's Instagram page and have a look because she's got some great ideas. Um, what I was going to say is you love your tools. I see there's a lot of pictures on your uh, on your Instagram page, especially the power tools. So what, what would you say should have been your favourite purchase or your favourite tool in your uh, in your toolkit then? <laughs> well, the, the best one definitely of recent is um, I'm a total convert to the nail gun. I never had one until very recently and it now would be my I think in my top three of like things you should buy to make projects easy I definitely at the start before I realized this was going to become like a kind of long time thing I was a bit stingy with what I was prepared to spend money on in terms of tools you know like why would I buy that so if I don't really need it and if I'm only going to use it for one project is it really worth it what you find is it takes you twice as long because you're there forever with a handsaw or as soon as you've my dad just always say you know the job's way easier when you've got the right tools and it's so right if you just with each project buy something that makes your life a little bit easier whether it's a clamp you know if you're doing something yourself and you've not got an extra pair of hands buy a set of clamps that will help you out but the nail gun is definitely a that's a new favorite i'm trying to the do nail that. gun i've never fired a nail gun before oh wait i i think i have once and it was really satisfying the kind of the pressure and the, the noise of it i you yeah. Um, yeah, so mine is Works UK that I've got, um, but I've also got a lot of evolution tools in my toolkit. I really rate their saws and things are really cost cost effective for. Have you been approached by out. brands? Yeah, brands brands approach you to kind of like work with you and stuff like that. Yeah, so the power tools, um, I've got a couple of things in the pipeline for things that are coming up with that, and because I'm able to integrate it really easily into how I'm going to use it, like at the minute. I'm really gunning for a multi-tool because it's easier to take off skirting boards and it's much easier for little jobs. That's my favourite um, tool. Yep. Yeah, it just looks so handy um, and a lot easier than the ways I've been trying to get things off. So, See, um, what I was going to ask you as well, <laughs> I'm the type of guy, I don't know if you're like this, if you've had this experience, but I'll go, I'll, I'll want to tackle something in the house, right? And I'll go out and buy all the tools and spend like a fortune, like getting all the tools, then I'll get back. And then, like, I've done stuff in the past where I've started the job and I've used the tool and I was like, oh, this is not going according to plan. And then the tool's just sat there in the garage. It's never been used again. I've ended up calling in a professional. <laughs> you know? Stuff like a mite or so, you know, like, it's like I'm going to do these yeah. boards myself. And I was like, no, this is actually quite tricky. <laughs> Bugger this. That, this, that mite or so has been used once. I think I now use it for chopping up. The last time I used it, I chopped up an old kid's swing with it just for uh, wood <laughs> for the fire. And I was like, I'll get this out. It's the second time it's been used ever. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's quite good because what also happens is that, like quite a few of my friends are into DIY as well. So now it's like a collective toolkit. So you like message in the WhatsApp, okay, I'm going to do this project. Who's got a tile cutter? Who's got this? Who's got that? And you all just borrow. So it's mm. uh, it's handy when your friends are interested in it too. What's what's the plan for your own property? Is that you set almost finished with your house, or are you would you sell it and go on a, a different project that you can kind of use to grow your account and, and business? I suppose with another project. Yeah, so when I bought my house, I initially really wanted to buy a project. I, at the time, was working shifts, so I used to work two weeks on, three weeks off, and I had oodles of time. By the time I actually came to buy that house, I'd gone back to a nine-to-five job. I wanted what I thought was the easy ozy life of just buy a new build, plug in your TV, you don't need to do anything, that's what everybody told me. Um, which is true, but if you want to make it your own, I've, you know, I've decorated now every room in the house once, if not twice in some cases. Um, and been able to hopefully add some value to it. You know, I don't think it will be anything like what it would have been if I'd flipped the house, but I do think it will be easier to sell because people come in and they like something that looks nice. Um, so I definitely am on the hunt now for the next project. I'm not sure that Aberdeen is where I'll be for the next kind of four to five years, maybe got other plans to try and move elsewhere. So if I do manage to move elsewhere, it definitely will be a, a project house on the cards for sure. So a flip project in Aberdeen perhaps? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I'll keep you in mind when I come across them. <laughs> uh, what's, your, what's your next project? You said you were uh, going to do a nursery, was it? I am, yeah. Safari is the theme of this weekend. So I've got a really good friend who's uh, yeah, expecting a little one imminently. So we're going to create a nice room for them this weekend. So there's some wall panelling on the cards. There's wallpapering of quite a tricky pattern to match up on the cards. So, And then the nice bit of the, the giraffe cuddly toys and the the nice prints to go on the wall so I'm we'll really follow, we will be able to follow that then is that on your instagram stories yeah it'll be on castle austin over the weekend on instagram stories and then a reveal if all goes well on sunday night hopefully so we'll see how the timeline goes over the weekend right alex we'll uh, we'll post the the your page on the show notes as well and then the other information for people can contact you reach out follow you watch the progress and more importantly get inspiration hints and tips from uh for their own DIY projects or or flip or buy to let projects. Yeah, you, yeah, you, absolutely. You've definitely got similar taste to my wife as well because I'm looking through your Instagram account and I'm seeing a lot of stuff that kind of looks similar to what we've got in the house as well. Which is one of the things was the you know the natural wood uh, table that you've got. Yeah, oh, we we've absolutely destroyed ours like with the kids like see we like. Uh, the bowls of porridge so I just microwave my yeah. porridge in the morning right for the kids so I'm putting out three bowls of porridge and I always forget to put the mats down we've got these big white heat circles like and it, the table's absolutely knackered and we spent a fortune this table as well so somehow I need to rescue it so I might be trying to find some tips from you if you've got any tips for that I knew you'd yeah. find this interview so useful Nick <laughs> You're definitely going to have to sand that back. You're going to need to put the elbow grease in. I think you're going to have to buy a sander if you've not got one already, for sure. I've got about three of them. Then maybe like <laughs> one of them still in the wrapper. <laughs> so yeah. No, it's a. Uh, maybe yeah, you want to see really... when you're in Glasgow doing your nursery. Did you want to swing uh, come by? and help with your table? I <laughs> uh, swing by Crookston and you can get some more content. <laughs> you can I, I, I was going to say this to you. It's funny how like. The, the, you know, we all create a life for ourselves and what we enjoy doing and the, the stuff that most people won't enjoy doing, like even Nick buying the tools, spending a fortune, then getting the tradesmen in. You love all this kind of stuff. You're actually getting dragged into your, your kids' ones, which I'm, I'm saying dragged in because that's what would appeal to me. Like, oh, I'm getting dragged in to help out with someone else. But no, you're actually loving it and going to go willingly and lovingly go and create this nursery over the weekend. Yeah, it's so funny. One of my my old flatmate actually is he's got his own flat now in Aberdeen, and we were speaking about uh, different things for his kitchen last week, and we're going to build a dining bench and all this different stuff. And then during the week, he messaged in the WhatsApp group, being like, "Oh, I've just got a joiner coming round," and I was like, "Joiner? I'm offended. What is this joiner for? I thought we'd mapped out all these plans of what we were going to build." And he's like, "Don't worry, I'm not taking the dining bench away from you. It's for something else. It's not for the dining bench." I was like, "Right, just as well because I thought we'd got this all mapped out." So. Yeah, I get quite protective over these projects once they let me get my hands on their houses. <laughs> I love it. Brilliant. 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 Alex, thank you very much for this interview. It's a great chat. Um, again, we'll, put, we'll post the show notes and uh, your details your page on the show notes. Thanks yeah, again. Thanks so much. And Brilliant. we'll get you along to the, uh, the Aberdeen event where you can be a guest speaker and showcase some projects as well. Yeah, absolutely. Count me in. It's been yeah, great to chat with you. Happy to do more in the future. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Bye for now. 
So guys, hope you enjoyed that interview. We always enjoy chatting to people from any kind of aspect of property. So if you want to be a guest on the Scottish Property Podcast, then just reach out. We'll have you on. Stephen, where can people uh, join the conversation, reach out to us? So mostly myself and Nick are on Instagram. We've got our own Instagram pages, Stephen Clark Property, Nick Ponte, and we've got the Scottish Property Podcast Instagram page as well. So yeah, give us a follow. And again, if you're watching, listening to the podcast on your your phone, screenshot the podcast you're listening to when you're doing your DIY, your projects, share it on your story and we'll reshare it on ours as well. Guys, first Wednesday of every month are the networking events. They're really gathering momentum now and there's such a buzz. We're getting phenomenal feedback. Everybody's getting really good value from them. So get onto Eventbrite and find one near you. There's Aberdeen, Dundee, Edinburgh and Glasgow. First Wednesday of each month. It's £20 for a ticket and uh, we'd love to have you along to one of them. So thanks again for listening and we'll speak to you again soon. Thanks a lot.